In this video, I'm gonna share four things I wish I knew about ulcerative colitis when I was first diagnosed. I was first diagnosed 11 years ago, so I feel like I've been through it all. I've had a lot of highs, a lot of lows, and I've learned a ton along the way. So in this video, I'm gonna share four things I wish I knew in the beginning, or at least close to the beginning, that have really made a difference as far as my health goes, and I really hope they help you. I'm Tina Hoppert. I am the woman behind the Carrots and Cake brand where I share my love for food and fitness, health and wellness. I work with clients one-on-one -on -one to help them with their hormones, their body composition goals, and their overall health. And today I'm gonna to talk about ulcerative colitis because I have struggled with the disease for more than a decade. And it is definitely a topic that is near and dear to my heart um, as far as helping other people with this disease because it can be be a tough one. So I hope you find this video helpful and you get some good information from it. Okay, so let's get right into this. So number one might sound like a surprise to you, but sometimes it's the food and sometimes it's not the food. And I say that coming from somebody who has tried every elimination diet out there. I swear, I swear I have tried every single one. I have tried the paleo diet, the autoimmune paleo diet, <laughs> the specific carbohydrate diet, the GAPS diet, low residue diet, high fiber diet, plant-based diet, carnivore diet, elemental diet, do not recommend that one, it was awful. I went low oxalate for a while, low FODMAP, IBD aid. I have tried all the diets. I have literally tried all the diets. And if you haven't heard of some of those, <laughs> feel free to look them up and try them yourself. Because I am not opposed to IBD patients trying different diets, because different things are gonna work for different people. But if you're in the boat, same boat as me, where you have tried all the diets and they have not helped your symptoms, don't feel badly, it is not you. <laughs> because I have tried them all. It's been 11 years of trying all these diets and I am somebody who, I kind of joke about it, but I am the perfect client. I am the perfect patient. When I do these diets, I do them 100%. I have no cheats, I go all in on them and I do everything like I'm supposed to in theory. But I can tell you, I spent many, many months devoted to each of these diets. I gave them time to quote unquote work and I never got one bit better. So. Just wanted to share this with any of any of you that are hanging in there trying to do these diets and just not getting the best results. I should say though, you can't eat like a jerk. So if you're eating fast food, processed food, fake sugars, just junky food and expecting that your health and your colon is gonna be healthy, it's not gonna work. Like you do need to eat healthy food. I think that is very, very important. But these specific diets where they are cutting out certain food groups, eliminating types of foods, certain categories of foods, they can be really, really hard um, mentally, emotionally, physically on the body. Um, so I think try them, give them 100% effort, but if they don't work, don't feel badly. There are some of us in this IBD world where these diet changes just don't work. So one thing I wanna say, if you're somebody who's tried all the diets, you're really struggling, I do have a few tips as far as what to eat when you're in a flare. Some of the things that have really helped me are obviously whole foods, things that come from the earth or that come from an animal or from the ocean, um, things that are not super processed, that don't have fake ingredients, artificial flavors, colors, all that stuff. And then another thing that has been really helpful is making sure the consistency of my food is really soft, like almost to the point of baby food. So a lot of times when I'm in a really bad flare, I will drink smoothies and I'll have soup and I'll puree foods like vegetables and things like that. Anything that's soft because it just breaks things down a little bit more. So it's easier to digest. It's easier on your digestive system. Um, same goes for just slowing down at meals, really chewing your food and really chewing it to the point of baby food. So making sure it's really, really soft and broken up before you swallow. It can just help as far as those flare symptoms go. But anyways, <laughs> back to the elimination diets. Don't feel badly if they work for you. And another thing I just want to point out and say, don't be on these elimination diets forever because 
they're exactly that. They're eliminating key nutrients, key minerals, key things that you need in your life. I think they can be really helpful short term, but you shouldn't be on an elimination diet for six months, nine months, a year, the rest of your life. I mean, it's just, it's no way to live, but that is number one. Um, don't feel bad if the diets don't work for you. Sometimes it's not the food. The second thing I wish I knew about ulcerative colitis when I was first diagnosed was medications are not bad. And I think when I was first diagnosed, I thought I could manage my symptoms with diet and lifestyle and supplements and whatever else it was, but I really just did not have great success. So I had to take the magic medications and initially they kind of helped. I was taking, um, I don't even know, six pills a day. I was doing enemas, things like that. And they helped, but they didn't totally help. And then I really needed to go to the next level of medication. So biologics, um, where I don't want to say they're hardcore necessarily. They're not scary. I, they seem scary, but they're not scary. But I was really hesitant to go towards those more intense drugs. I, I, I was just really scared. I had heard about all the side effects and of course the side effects can be scary. I didn't want to rely on those drugs. I mean, some of them are infusions where you have to go to a hospital or have a nurse come to your house. And I just didn't want that to be my life. But at the same time, I was really sick. My body was flaring out of control. I was going to the bathroom up to 30 times a day with bloody diarrhea. My hair was falling out. I was dragging my ass around. I was exhausted because my body was falling apart. And looking back, I feel like I waited too long. I waited way too long to start biologics. And the thing with UC and IBD in general is you can't let the inflammation get out of control. At the end of the day, those medications, there's a time and a place for them and they can get you out of that crazy state that your body is in and into remission. So anybody who is hesitant about taking them, they can change your life. They can give you your life back and they can give you a very, very good quality of life. Um, and that's the thing. I don't think good enough with your health is good enough when you are having really, really bad symptoms that are leaving you housebound or worrying about where the bathroom is or preventing you from doing your favorite things like traveling and exercising and hanging out with your friends. So all this to say, medications are not bad and sometimes you need them. Sometimes you need them for your health to get that inflammation under control and sometimes you need them to get your life back. So don't be afraid of them. The third thing I wish I knew when I was first diagnosed with ulcerative colitis is that there's an emotional component to it. <laughs> so when I was first diagnosed, I feel like I ignored a lot of the symptoms. I mean, even leave it leading up to my diagnosis, I just didn't think the symptoms were that bad and ignored them. And I am very much a type A personality. So when I was having these symptoms, I felt like I was just trying to control what was happening so much. And that control came out in doing diets perfectly, taking the right supplements, supposedly doing all the right things, but really I was making myself more and more crazy and stressing myself out more and holding on to every little thing and expecting results immediately. And over the years, I have learned that you can't hold on to the disease like that. You do have to let go a little bit and you have to be patient. This healing process takes time, change takes time, and really just being kind to yourself. And I think I was really hard on myself in the beginning and not getting the results that I wanted. I blamed myself a lot for this disease, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I would look at all the things that I did in my life and medications I took, you know, things I ate, whatever it was. And there was a lot of blame and shame involved in all of it. And thankfully I discovered talk therapy and I've been working a lot of this out as far as the blame and the shame, but also, you know, some trauma from my past that I've been working out. I really believe that anybody that is struggling with a chronic disease an autoimmune disease, any sort of long-term illness that they're really having trouble 
recovering from or finding remission, there is some sort of emotional piece to it. Could be a trauma piece, but that could be something for you to explore. And maybe that's a video I do in the future, talking a little bit more about that and some of the resources that have helped me, but I've really digged into the emotional side of things. And I think when I was first diagnosed, I thought it was just the food. I really focused so much on the food, which goes back to number one. Sometimes it's not the food. So just wanted to give you a different perspective. And if you're somebody that maybe is having a little bit of emotional turmoil or extra stress in their life, um, to look at your life a little bit differently and see where you can simplify, where you can remove some stress and really be kind to your body because our bodies are reacting to something in our environment as far as amping up our immune system and quote unquote, our bodies attacking themselves. I don't know if I totally believe that as far as ulcerative colitis goes. I think things are just messed up as far as the gut goes, but there is, there is definitely an emotional piece to it. And just one quick thing to add about that point, some modalities that might help you. Um, talk therapy, um, like I said, has been amazing for me, but meditation, even five minutes of meditation, slowing down, deep breathing, tapping, EMDR, walking, walking around Target. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to calm your body, I think, can make a huge, huge difference in how your flare symptoms present themselves and how long that flare might last. The last thing I wish I knew when I was first diagnosed is only you can heal yourself. And I know this probably sounds like a little cheesy. And if you were recently diagnosed or you don't know much about the disease in general, I mean, it's taken me many, many years to learn about this disease and how my body works and how my body responds to different things. It could be a lot. You could be relying a lot on doctors and I love doctors. I love medications. I think they are all worth it and we need them at different times in our journey. But ultimately you are the expert of your own body. You know what's going on for symptoms. You know how certain medications and foods make you feel. So don't ignore that. And I know, again, this is going to sound cheesy and a little woo, but the more you can quiet down your brain and quiet all the stuff around you, all the different influences, external forces and everything, and really listen to your body and pay attention to your symptoms, the more information you can get. And with that, you can start to make changes and heal your body. <laughs> Again, I know it sounds woo and a little bit cheesy, but your experience is different than everyone else's. I mean, I have a good number of friends that have UC and our symptoms are different. Our experience is different. What works for each of us is very, very different. So remember that when you're going through this journey, you know, if somebody says they're drinking aloe water and they're <laughs> totally in remission, that's great for them. It might not work for you and that's okay. This whole process, this whole journey that you're on, it's all about finding what works best for you. So don't be afraid to try different things, but remember you are the expert. You are the expert when it comes to your symptoms and your disease. And you really need to be the best advocate for yourself. If your doctor or practitioner is telling you something that doesn't sit with you, doesn't sit well with you, or is causing worse symptoms or making you feel worse, don't do it. Tell them there's got to be a better way. So at the end of the day, you know, your body better than anybody else. So speak up, advocate for yourself and really try to get in tune with what's going on in your body and keep going. That's what I keep telling all my clients. I tell myself this all the time. Anybody who is struggling with a disease, keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. I mean, the second you give up is the second that you succumb to this disease. And there is such a wonderful life out there where remission can be achieved and where you can feel your best. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful as you navigate your ulcerative colitis journey. I will absolutely be making more videos about UC and IBD and gut health in general. So definitely keep a lookout for them. In sum, there are a lot of things I wish I knew about ulcerative colitis when I was first diagnosed, but these four are definitely the top things I wish I knew. And I feel like over the years I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've also learned a lot. And hopefully you found some value in the this video today and you will take a second to like this video and subscribe because I will definitely be putting out 
more content related to ulcerative colitis and gut health in general. So please stay tuned and thank you for watching today.